Hello, I'm Ryan Bruby, and this is my MP CNC. Uh, it's a CNC mill uh, designed by V1 Engineering, and it is composed of three printed parts, such as parts like these. It is pretty much a CNC multi tool and can be used for any purpose, but it's commonly used for CNC milling. A typical MPCNC MP runs on belts and is controlled by a firmware called Marlin, which also runs a lot of 3D printers, like that one there and that one there. Just the majority of 3D printers run Marlin. This is my MPCNC, and right now I am in the process of converting it from using belts to lead screws, which is why why it's kind of a mess right now. This is the this is what I've done so far on the lead screws. I have half of half an access pretty access pretty much set up with one lead screw, and um, in order to get the other three three like half accesses set up like this one, I need to wait for a couple more parts. But uh, I don't want them all set up like this one because this one, after assembling it, I see it has some problems. This oscillates probably because either this thin mounting or the the screws I am attaching this to are too long so I had to use washers well nuts but I didn't have washers thick enough and so that can also create uh, a weak mounting so I might have uh, smaller M3 screws and uh, another problem is that when this roller is down on this side a roller like this um, when this roller is down on this side, this end of the lead screw sags. And so it needs a bushing down here to keep it straight because the, the amount of sagging it was doing, it was gonna bend and it's just not good for the lead screw. Um, the main goal of converting the MPCNC to use lead screws is to increase accuracy and increase rigidity. Um, one of the things I noticed when the MPCNC was on belts is these belts have some flex in them so that when these steppers are locked, it can still flex this belt. Another place you can see this flex is if the cutter is going through load, milling like something like a metal, then this axis, the, the axis that would normally be with this roller, would try and move, but instead of moving the whole gantry, what I think could have happened, or could be happening that uh, decreases rigidity, is this just stretches this around the, the pulley. Instead of actually moving the gantry, it just tensions the belt. Here, I'm going to demonstrate the, the lead screw. So if I tell it to move 10 millimeters, move 10 millimeters, and it's actually considerably fast. That was one of the concerns I had, was the speed of the lead screw. And it's actually considerably fast, and this is, this is what the program says is 200 mil, uh, 2,000 millimeters per minute, but I don't know if that's actually correct because it's programmed for the Z lead screw here. So the steps per millimeter for this Z lead screw here, which is how fast this has to turn to make this move a millimeter, which I don't know if these are the same. I haven't uh, figured that out yet or really um, looked into that and set it for this lead screw. Right now it's just running off the Z axis on the control board, which was running off this which will still be the same. This, this, is, this Z axis is not gonna change at all because it already has a lead screw. When moving this, you can see that stepper on the end move around and it might not be a huge problem, but it is something I like to have fixed. And another thing you can see is this lead screw kind of go up and down. I think that's because Across this distance, it has some slack. Like, if I pull on this a little bit, you can see this tension 
Um, and I think you can also see this move. So I think fixing this and then also having the whole gantry here will solve that problem a uh, good amount. Going to assemble another half half axis while I wait for that to print to assemble all of them. Uh, I noticed that there's no way this is going to fit here. Um, that's not a design flaw, actually. I have to take apart this whole axis to move this over uh, because I assembled it wrong and it's not supposed to be two steppers in one corner. It's supposed to be one stepper in each corner, I'm pretty sure. The problem now is that I need to get this set up facing this way. I need this stepper to face this way so that I can have one stepper in each corner. But the problem is that it would have to go like this. And so that means the stepper has to go here, which is not how it was designed. See, there's ribs on this face. So what I'm going to have to do is take this stepper off, grind the ribs off or sand the ribs off. And then it should be able to be mounted like this, facing this way. This does now fit. I have completely sanded the ribs off. Um, hopefully it's not, you know, considerably more flimsy, but I am gonna come up with another solution for mounting this. This is not going to be solely mounted by this tab forever. What I plan to do for this thing's new mounting solution, because it's so flimsy, is probably just have a clamp here that also clamps here, or you know, something that, like a post, generally just something that clamps onto this. I don't want to have to remake these parts because there's really not much way that I can remake them to be more rigid, especially considering this here, this is the sides for my enclosure. Um, it's already kind of kind of close to the side to the enclosure. There's not really much way for me to make this more rigid without coming close to the side of the enclosure. If I just make a post here, a lot like this one, this just comes up and holds this, or just a clamp on this post that's already there, it will be more rigid. I now have this axis set back up like it was before. Um, I'm not gonna test it because it's gonna run the same, um, or or worse, uh, I guess, because this will wobble more because it has no, it doesn't have those ribs anymore, um, and this is hanging off farther than from like the side of the the gantry. But um, it's gonna pretty much run the same. I'm gonna set up this half of the axis, um, and then by then that might be done, and I can set up the whole the whole thing have all four lead screws going, and then I can work on the bushing for this 
and the post for this. After that, I need the clamps that hold these pipes on, which will be quick, and then I can have the whole thing set up and the gantry. <laughs> I now have everything set up and ready to run. I didn't make the posts for the steppers that I said I was going to, because I thought it would be fine enough to run, you know, just like a preliminary test without it. So now I have the bushings made and I'm ready to run. I'm just gonna do some like kind of contouring in a in a two by four with a three flute quarter inch end mill, uh, ball nose. Um, I don't expect any like you know chat or anything but if it does happen i mean uh, i could attribute it to the steppers and that can be solved After running that, it went pretty well. Um, the only problem is, if you see, like, you know, that's obviously not supposed to be there. It looks like it almost skipped over. And I don't think it is the the lead screws because it would have happened, like, farther down. The two things that could cause this, that would be, like, the lead screw's fault, is it skipping steps or, like, chattering, which two things I would notice. Or, like, maybe the lead screws weren't fully tightened in the grub screws. But I probably would have noticed that, too. And I don't think that's what's happening. Um, I think probably what happened is the the, pro my, uh, the program that sends G-code to the, uh, the mill probably froze for a second, which probably caused that. I don't know what else would have caused it, because I, I would have noticed anything else. And it's, like, fine throughout the rest of the contour. So... I don't know for sure, and I'm sure I've, I'll find out if it is a problem with the lead screws in further running in the mill. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think it works, you know, pretty well besides this, which I'm sure I'll find out if it is like an actual problem. Uh, my next project with the mill is right now I'm using the DeWalt 660, which is almost like a standard for like hobbyist spindles. It's a drywall cutout tool. My next project for the mill is to set up uh, like a, it's like a Chinese spindle. Um, it's another like thing that a lot of people use and I'm setting it up to use automatic speed control so I can set the speed through the g-code and have it control it even under load so it can hold that speed if it uh, is cutting and it will stay at that like standard rpm um, so that's what I'm gonna be working on next I already have the program written out for that but that's the end of this